It's a great day. My name is Che Brown, the Happy Entrepreneur, and welcome to the Happy Entrepreneur Show, the number one business development and revenue-focused late-night show in the country where we are on a mission. And our mission really is to empower, our mission is to inspire, and our mission is to provide you, the entrepreneur, with all of the resources that are necessary to execute that big, 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 big vision you have for the people you were called to serve. And on this episode, we have the one and only Sasha Thompson, and she'll be talking about how to be resilient in tough times. Hmm. What's going on, Sasha? How are you? I'm good, Shay. How are you? Oh, we are moving in the fast lane. <laughs> I got the pedal to the <laughs> I love it. I love it. Full steam ahead, by the way. Thanks for being on here. I know we're talking about being resilient, but let me ask this question first. Why are folks struggling these days? Or what's the biggest challenges, I should say? What are some of the challenges that are facing folks to just be consistent and push through through tough times? Why are they struggling so much to do that? You know, I think it's a couple of things. One, um, if there has been a similar shift or change previously, what worked before may not be working now. Uh, we're looking at a different economy. We are now in a time where this is election season and this election season is just very <laughs> odd for lack mm -hmm. of a better uh, phrase. And so I think that that's impacting people and businesses and organizations in ways that it hasn't previously in last you know, presidential elections. Um, I think we are still recovering some from being in a pandemic and, you know, folks want to get back to in pre pandemic times, but Pandora's box has been opened. And so we are now shifting and operating in spaces where we haven't been before. So I think what resilience has looked like previously is very different than what it looks like now. Now, for the folks that are watching and myself included, resilience can mean different things to different people. Can you take a moment? And what is your definition of resilience these days? Yeah, so it's being able to adapt or shift um, when something doesn't go right, right? When you have a hardship in life or in work, how are you able to make that adjustment? How are you able to shift so that you have what you need in order to be successful? Right. So that's that's kind of how I look at resilience. Mm. Now, there, there are some points that we, we can talk to two type of individuals. Let's let's first talk to the person right now that is going through some tough times. Maybe they were laid off. Uh, perhaps mm -hmm. they've gone. They've got the news where a family member um, has, has a medical condition. I'll say it like that. Uh, or, or, or maybe uh, life just hit them with the punch they never saw coming. Um, yeah. what's maybe one, two or three things you would say to that person that showed up right now, even before we get on this interview and they're like, you know what, hope you're going to give me some ideas because, um, I guess the young folks say now life be life. And I guess that's a new term these days. Yeah. I gotta, I gotta feel like I'm relevant these days. <laughs> yeah. I mean, no, it's, it's interesting when we were just coming on, I shared with you that I, I received an email. And it was a similar thing where it was a friend whose life has been lifing and doing some outreach in ways that historically he probably wouldn't have done that. And I think part of that is one, understanding or knowing who's in your circle of support, right? Understand your true circle of support because there are a lot of folks out there that say they have your back. And then as soon as you need something, you can't find them, right? They don't know how to answer their phone. Who are the folks that truly have your back? And it may not be family, unfortunately. It may be friends. It may be someone who has crossed your path um, in another place or space in your life. So really, you know, looking and, and seeing who those folks are, um, understanding what is it that you need right now. And for some, we're looking at Maslow's hierarchy of needs, right? It's just food, clothes, shelter might be what you're looking for. It may be some ideas. It may be some opportunities for jobs. Really be clear on what is it that you need right now. And then the third thing that I would say is honoring yourself as far as self-care. Um, these are stressful, stressful times. And so it's difficult to constantly be in this state of flux. I'm speaking from experience as well. And understanding, you know what, I just need to step away from this computer right now. I've been doing this job search or whatever it is. 
let me just go take a walk. Let me just spend some time, you know, with my, my family and my friends. Let me do something that brings me joy in this moment. And so I think when we are often in these spaces where the anxiety is high, we're feeling like we're spiraling, we forget that there are some places and spaces in our lives that bring us joy. And so how do we tap into those? Um, because I think that that's what kind of helps us turn the tide, if you will. Spot on. And before we talk about who you are, because some folks, they haven't read your bio, very extensive bio. A number of folks have not been to your website. They've not Googled you. They're just showing up and hearing you right now. And others, you're like, Shay, I already know who she is. This is great. Don't worry. We'll get her backstory in a moment if we can. <laughs> to the person that's working with someone who is helping someone go through resilience uh, or had a mm -hmm. setback, um, what are one or two things, two, one, two or three things that we could do? I had a conversation with someone today and uh, um, a co-worker's parents, a uh, parent had passed away and they were like, is it okay if I just send them a note through Teams? Is that appropriate? And I, said, I, I don't know. I mean, that's the only way you can communicate with them. Maybe pick up the phone and call. I, I don't know. So mm -hmm. I guess my question is when you're the support side, mm -hmm. um, what are one or two, three, one, two or three things that we can do to support someone who is going through um, some tough times. Yeah. So using the example that you just gave, you know, my first inclination is how do you, how do you regularly communicate with them? Right. Mm -hmm. Reach out in those same channels, reach out. And if you feel like, you know what, I want to be a little bit more personable answer, you know, ask, answer the phone, right. Or pick up the phone, um, make that personal connection with that individual, because oftentimes, you know, you feel like you are just a cog in a machine and you want to have that personal connection and touch. Um, when I'm working with clients, I always ask them like, what's your plan? And when I ask them what their plan is, what is your purpose? What are you trying to accomplish here? All right. So is it looking for a job? Is it looking for more stability? Whatever it is, what is your purpose? What are your limitations? What's holding you back from these things? And really like, let's outline what it takes to, what's hindering your progress here. The A is for action. What actions do you need to take in order to remove some of those barriers um, or position yourself in a different way? And so it may be a different perspective of looking at the situation. And then network. One of the things that I think we do well and then we don't do so well is we all have a network of people. Do we have the right people in our network to help us get to where we want to go, right? So who in your network can help you remove some of those barriers? So for example, I was looking for um, some people to help me with a project. And I really had to think I could have even, I could have done a blast out to my entire network. That would not have been fruitful. So I was very strategic and I want to share with these folks because they can connect me if they're not connected to people that are connected in this space. And so it was a better use of my time. And again, being much more strategic in how I was utilizing those networks and those individuals. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, so that's when I talk about a plan, it really mm -hmm. is a strategy and, and how you move forward, but it also helps you get out of that muck and mire of kind of spiraling down. You feel like you are actually achieving something because you are working toward a goal. Ah, I love it. And the, the question I have now, and thanks for sharing, by the way, those, those are some fantastic tips and, and great ideas. So I get stuck there myself is who are you now? <laughs> I know it's kind of crazy, by the way, because we were talking about how to be resilient, how to get going and how to get through tough times. And someone's listening to say, I like her. She sounds pretty cool, but what's her backstory? And more importantly, yeah. what was that defining moment? that led her to raise her hand and say, you know what, one of my purposes in life is to help other people make sure they can be resilient when they're going through some tough or trying times. So you know the question, who are you and what's the backstory that led you to doing what you're doing now? Yeah. And it's, you know, oddly enough, it's all tied together, right? So I'm Sasha Thompson. I am the inclusive culture curator. I'm the founder of the Equity Equation. And at the Equi Equity Equation, we work with organizations to help them build inclusive workplaces that center psychological safety. And I got to this moment because I was going through a time where I needed to be resilient. I was in a, a very toxic workplace and 
had to go through all of these steps, go through my plan, go through all of these things to get to a point and create an environment that worked for me. And so what I do now is I work with organizations to help them figure out how to make it more inclusive for everyone so they feel valued, seen, heard, and connected. And then I work with individuals who may have been like me and you're in a toxic environment or you're in a situation that you know is not good for you. How do you start to put your plan together and either find a better situation for yourself, create your own situation like I did, or start to really think about, okay, what brings me joy and lean into that. So that is who I am. That is what I do. I absolutely love this work. Um, and I find that the more and more I work with individuals, the more joy that I find in my life. Ah, cool. And it sounds like you're having a lot of fun doing what you're doing now. Um, how do you find balance? Because I know you talked about helping people find equity at, at work and then also going through tough times. A number of our audience, by the way, they're dualpreneurs. They work full-time jobs. Mm -hmm. They're full-time entrepreneurs, if that makes sense. Um, they're also folks who could be a mom. They could be a dad. Could be a husband. Could be a wife. Could be in a relationship. Could uh, be a caregiver. I'm a caregiver. They could be uh, someone out there that's involved in a community, involved in other activities. And there's someone right now that's watching me saying, Shay, I'm checking all the boxes. And you still left some off, by the way way so my question yep. is how do you balance having everything going on and still find time to take care of yourself without feeling guilty i guess that's the question i have mm. you know, when you're going through challenging times some people say look i got i'm gonna take care of everybody else so so how would you, yeah. what would you say to that person that had that question now like how do you find time to balance and prioritize things and take care of yeah. yourself Without feeling you know, it, I love that. I love that question. Um, often, so I, I have my own podcast, and one of the questions that I that I always ask my guests is, "What do you do to fill your cup?" And I ask that question because I truly believe that you can't give to others um, unless your cup is full, right? You have to give from your overflow. And so, what are the things that you are doing to fill your cup? And you have to prioritize you, right? We've all heard on the airplane, put your mask going before you help others. It's that same concept. And so when I work with folks, it is, okay, what are the things that you need in order to feel like your cup is full? And once you kind of establish what that looks like day to day, then you can start kind of putting in some of those other pieces, right? So I'm a bonus mom. And one of the things that I am very cognizant of is when we have the boys with us that they have my full attention. But in order for that to happen, I have to make sure I take care of some other things, right? Um, when I when I can. So it's it's making sure that you balance those things. It also is what are you prioritizing right now? Um, for me, I am very very <laughs> cognizant of my mental health. And so I make sure that I take those moments in the morning, I take those moments in the evening to just, just decompress, right? I can't be good for anybody else. All the organizations that I'm a part of, I can't be good for anyone unless I have that time and that moment for me. And so I make sure that that is either scheduled out on my calendar, just like any other meeting or um, activity that I do. I also um, want to let people think about or have people think about what truly brings you joy and how often do you do that? And I, I want people to think about, you know, bringing those things, those moments of joy into your life, into your house, at least 10, 10 minutes a day, right? There's something that you could do for 10 minutes that just brings you joy. Um, I have one client where he went on vacation and, you know, I think, yeah, he went to Mexico and, you know, fell in love with the colors and the food and all of that. And I was like, how can you bring that back into your office so that you're having that vacation moment at least once or twice a day? And he re ended up rearranging his office so that he's, his desk was now looking outside, right? So it's, it's small things that you can do to help bring some of that calm, bring some of that joy in so that it doesn't feel like it's an add-on, but it's just a part of your everyday activities so that you can show up fully in those other spaces. Mm, I love it. So well said, by the way. And it's, a, it's a perfect segue into a segment we have here called Today Is 
my January 1st. Now, for those folks that know what I'm about to do, I know you wait to 11 p.m. Eastern Standard Time to say these magical words. You can repeat these words after me. Today is my January 1st. Happy New Year to you. I know that feels good. And for others, this is your very first time. Welcome to the Happy Entrepreneur Show. Today is my January 1st is our personal mantra here at the show. It represents a fresh start. It represents a do-over. It means our past, no matter how dark and gloomy that past is or how bright and sunny that past is back there, the past does not equal the future. And so my question for Sasha on the other side is really twofold. Number one, when you hear those words, today is my January 1st. What do you hear? And number two, what was another moment in your life, a defining moment, that there was a setback, there was some challenge? And then how did you be resilient? How did you bounce back? Yeah. So today's my January 1st means to me, like you're turning the page. This is a new chapter. Like how do, what do you want on those pages? Right. What do you want that story to be? And so it is truly a fresh start, you know? And so I start thinking now it's, it's funny. I have already blocked, you know, half of December and going into January off of my calendar because I'm like, you know what, come January one, this is a new year. It is, a year of celebration, you know, I turn 50 next year. It's, it's a whole bunch of things that are happening next year. And so how do I want this story to begin? And it's, I, I'm excited about it. And so part of that really is being intentional about celebrating, celebrating life, celebrating just all the things. And so that is how I'm starting my January one. As far as a setback, um, I think, you know, what led me to being a part of actually starting the equity equation, right? I was in a toxic workplace and um, I had been moved into a department where I just did not want to be that leader and I did not see eye to eye. And, you know, I even told HR, I was like, you're moving me into my abuser's home. And <clears throat> it came a situation where my hair was falling out um, I had developed ulcers. I had been rushed to the ER three times, all because of stress, um, all because of dealing with this toxic person who, you know, told me I was the worst employee this company, this Fortune 100 company had ever, you know, seen. I was the reason why Black people were not coming to work there. You know, all of these just horrible, horrible things that were coming to me at a really just constant basis. Um, and so I ended up really thinking about what do I want my future to be, right? I can't continue going to the ER. And so I have to create a new life. And so I started the equity equation really focused on how do I help others not be in the same situation that I'm in? How do we create these workplaces? Um, and so that's kind of where the start of working with individuals like myself, getting them out of these situations um, but then also the other side of that was they are not the ones that need to be fixed. It's these organizations, it's these systems. And so that's the other side of the business is working with organizations to create environments that are helpful and, and worthy of the talent that everyone brings to the table. Ah, I love it, by the way. Thanks for sharing. Thanks for being so authentic. And I'm glad you're in a much better situation today than you were Absolutely. yesterday. You know, one of my question I love to ask is what's one of the best pieces of advice you've ever been given? And I'll frame it for the audience so they understand mm -hmm. that we're not asking you to come off the mountain with the Ten Commandments here, but you've read more <laughs> books than you can probably remember right now. And I'm sure you don't, I don't know how many YouTube or videos you watch. I know I can't even count the hours anymore. Um, and I'm sure you had mentors along this journey, but if you had to step back mm -hmm. and say, you know, I've been given a lot of pieces of advice, but here's one that I've been given that I hold near and dear to me that I'm going to pass on to you, the audience. What is the piece of advice and, and why? It came from my mom um, and it's your time isn't God's time. And mm. I'm a planner. I, you know, I, I, I want everything in this order. And when it doesn't happen that way, I would get so frustrated. And she was just like, Sasha, your time is not God's time. When it is meant to be, it will be. If it's for you, it'll be for you. And I really had to sit in that. And I think it, it hit me as an adult that you know, sometimes you just need to sit and be still and get out of his way. Um, and those doors will open if it's that's the right thing for you. Um, so I, I say it in that way. 
And it's also kind of tied to, you know, you might think that a door is closed, but he might have opened a window. And so just, again, sitting in in those moments and understanding what opportunities are available to you. And you may not see it as an opportunity at that moment, but again, his plan is different than yours. So leaning into that and really um, having the faith that, that you will get through. Ah, I love it, by the way. You know, what do you enjoy most about what you're doing these days? You could be doing a lot of things, a lot of stuff with your time. What do you enjoy about what you're doing these days? Um, you know, right now we're working on what we're calling the resilience pathway. And I love being able to talk to folks and really understanding, like, what is it that you need? Um, and what does joy look like for you? And so hearing all of the different stories, you know, I was talking to someone yesterday and she's like, oh, I go floating. I'm like, what in the world is floating? And she's like, no, you're really like zero gravity in water. <laughs> and it's like no sensory. You can't, can't see anything. You can't hear anything. And it just allows you to be. Um, so it's, it's finding out those types of things. It's I'm not going to be the one that's going to be rock climbing. But for some people, that is what brings them joy. And so it's, it's just really um, hearing all of those stories and finding out that self-care looks so very different for everyone. Mm. Yeah. What do you do for fun when you're not out saving the world? <laughs> oh, gosh, not saving the world. Um, I love <laughs> to bake. I have not done it in a while, but I love to bake. I used to crochet a lot. Wow. Um, I love to dance. I, I love to dance and have fun with my friends. Like I am the one I just want to sit and laugh and watch comedy all the time. But yeah, those are the things that bring me joy. If I can laugh, then I'm having a, a really great time. Ah, yeah. that's amazing. Well, hopefully you're having a few chuckles on this on this show here. We have to go back and rewind. <laughs> Just having it. a good time. <laughs> um, with that being said, as we come down the home stretch, a two part question. Uh, number one, how can what type of clients is your firm looking to work with these days, if any? And number two, how can folks best connect with you? How can they stay in this conversation over and beyond the time that you and I have right now? Yeah. So there's two types of clients that we're working with. Um, one are individuals that may be in a situation that you're like, I don't know if this is the right place for me, or I've been going through the situation. How do I find a path forward? We would love to, to work with you. We also work with organizations that are really committed to building inclusive workplaces and trying to figure out, okay, what do we need to do to make sure that it's psychologically safe where people feel that they can trust us? Um, and so we do a lot of work in that space as well, too. And then what was your second question? It just went How can they head. best connect with you? Where should yes. they go to connect with you and stay in a conversation? Yes. So you can always find me at the Equity Equation, um, LLC.com, our website. You can find me anywhere on social media at the Equity Equation. We are all over the socials. Uh, and then you can email me at Sasha, S-A-C-H-A, at the equity equation llc.com and i will respond mm. well let me say two things number one i'm glad remy connected you and i together thanks so much for being on the happy entrepreneur show we appreciate it absolutely thank you for having me and thank you thank you to viewers thank you for tuning in by the way because you know without you we really don't have a show so we appreciate every time you show up we are very thankful for the comments sometimes you hit the like button depending on what platform you're watching on or maybe you're listening if you're streaming it right now um but i always say hit the share button if you can today just just hit the share button with this message and pay this forward to someone else that's out there i never get tired of reminding you every night at 11 p.m eastern standard time that you're really someone that's really special. You're really someone that's unique. I know it sounds hokey dokey, you know, and hyperbole, but it's not. You've got so much potential inside you to make such a big difference in the world and that no matter what's going on in your life right now, maybe you're doing really, really, really well and there's still that next level. And maybe life's hit you with the punch you never saw coming. Doesn't matter. I know one thing for certain. If you're breathing, today is your January 1st. And because of just that one reason, your best is still yet to come. Your best is yet to come. Your best is yet to come. With that being said, my name, it hasn't changed. Yep, still me, Che Brown, the happy entrepreneur. Make it a great day, everyone. We out of here. Peace. Thanks a lot, Sasha. I appreciate you. Bye-bye, everyone. Bye-bye.